Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As preppers, we try to be ready for as many different types of situations as we can. While things like weather events and other small scale disasters do happen regularly, we also live in a time where it's wise to start focusing on some of the larger scale disasters as well. One of the most dangerous threats that we could face would be an EMP or an electromagnetic pulse. This could potentially take our society back at least a hundred years and the loss of life would probably be tremendous. So today we're going to be talking about preps that you would need to help you survive the aftermath of an EMP. But it's important to understand that no one knows exactly what an EMP would do to modern society. Some things just haven't been researched all that well, while others that have are classified. But all experts agree that it would probably be very bad. Anything that's connected to the power grid will likely be destroyed. That includes everything from large transformers, which could take months or years to replace, all the way to your television and refrigerator or other devices you have plugged in at home and devices with antennas would also likely be destroyed. However, there is some debate as to which electronics that aren't directly connected to the grid would survive. There's some research out there that suggests that a lot of cell phones would actually continue to work, but the infrastructure that makes them useful probably wouldn't. The survival of other electronics, including those found in vehicles, would likely depend on several circumstances. These could include how far away they were from the pulse when it happened, as well as how well they were shielded from it. There's a lot of electronics that we use today that wouldn't be too useful in a long-term survival situation, but there are some devices that could be game changers. Radios can be used to communicate with other members of your family or survival group, and motion sensors could be used to help monitor your property. Flashlights are always good to have around, and red dots and other electronic optics would be very useful to have in a fight. And if you have devices like these that use rechargeable batteries, then some sort of generator, especially a solar option, would be useful. That is, as long as nuclear winter or nuclear autumn doesn't prevent them from working. And while many of these devices could help you survive the aftermath of an EMP, they're also the ones that are vulnerable to one, so you would need a way to protect them. Faraday bags like these are good for protecting small electronics. They come in a few different sizes, but they get pretty expensive the larger they get. Homemade Faraday cages made from things like trash cans and ammo cans are another option, but you should test them as thoroughly as possible to ensure that they seal well and actually work. For this one, I used a galvanized steel trash can and some aluminum tape to cover the gaps between the handles and the body of the can as well as its seams. I lined the bottom and sides with cardboard to insulate the devices inside from the body of the can and also made a gasket out of some aluminum foil that I folded over a couple of times to fit the top. Although I don't have specialized equipment designed specifically for measuring its level of protection, it did do a very good job eliminating AM, FM, and then also cellular signals. My wife tried to call me twice and both times it went straight to voicemail and it wasn't detectable using the Find My app on my computer. So that means that the network wasn't able to communicate with that device at all. As far as what I'll be keeping inside, I'll have things like a solar power station along with some spare battery chargers, a GMRS radio, and some smaller devices like motion sensors. You can also purchase things like Faraday tents, although since they're so large, they can get pretty expensive. The Faraday trash can that I made cost around $60 even after taxes. If you have odd shaped or large equipment like solar panels, a cheap although junky option may be to keep them in their original box and wrap that box with aluminum foil. Adding multiple layers of foil somewhere between three to five would give you the best chance of success. And while the panels themselves should be relatively safe, they may contain components that could be damaged. I'll be doing a full video showing how to make Faraday cages out of just things you may have lying around the house, so keep an eye out for that. And after I post that, I'll be sure to put a card at the end of this video. Another thing that you need to have to survive an EMP is plenty of water stored at your home. If one immediately precedes a nuclear strike, you may be sheltering in place for a while and obtaining water from outside may not be safe. Bottled water and portable water containers would be very useful in these kinds of situations. I also like portable water containers because they can be used to hold water that you collect later on once it's safe to do so again. Larger containers like barrels are good to keep in your garage or basement and can also be used in rainwater harvesting systems. And it's also important to not overlook last ditch water storage options like collapsible water containers and bathtub liners like the Aquapot or Water Bob. If you live in an area where sheltering in place makes sense, filling these up at the first sign of trouble can greatly increase your available water storage. Most municipal water supplies are gravity fed and will continue to supply water until the towers and supply lines are empty. 
even if you don't have containers like what I mentioned, even filling up things like cooking pots and pitchers or five gallon buckets would be better than nothing. Since an EMP would likely result in a long term survival situation, you also need to have a water replenishment plan. For many, the best way to go about doing this would be to use a rainwater harvesting system built into your home. If you're unable to do that, a makeshift system using things like tarps and totes could work, and setting out towels and letting them absorb rainwater is another possibility. However, you do need to be aware of the possibility of black rain, especially during the hours and days immediately following a ground strike, because the last thing that you want to do is drink water that's been contaminated by fallout. If you collect water from other natural sources, aside from radioactive contamination, you also want to do what you can to remove biological and chemical contaminants. And in situations like that, using a multi-step water purification process would probably be the way to go. Start by using something like a Sawyer tap filter attached to a bucket to remove sediment along with bacteria and protozoa. Next, boil it or disinfect it with bleach or a bleach solution you've made from granular calcium hypochlorite to kill any remaining biological threats, including viruses. If you'd rather rely on boiling water, then a rocket stove would be a very good option. The one that I have can boil large quantities of water and should last a long time. Finally, running your water through something with activated charcoal or a Berkey filter should do a good job removing any chemical contaminants that may be present. But removing radioactive contamination can be a little bit more in depth, so that might be something to cover in its own video later on. The next thing that you need to have to survive an EMP is food. Canned goods are a good option since they don't require a lot of water or fuel to prepare. A stockpile of canned meats, vegetables, and fruits can go a long way towards giving your family a decent, balanced diet. Dry goods like beans and rice are the cheapest foods to store in bulk, however, they do require a lot of water and fuel to prepare. And if you have anybody in your family with special dietary needs, folks like infants or diabetics, be sure that you have food that they can eat as well. Freeze-dried foods are another option, and they have a very long shelf life, but they're expensive to store in large quantities, and they require water to prepare. And since you'll be relying on food storage, it's also a good idea to have some multivitamins on hand. Those can kind of fill any nutritional gaps that are left by the foods that you have stored. Although radioactive contamination may make this difficult in some circumstances, you should also try to grow as much of your own food as possible. The effects of an EMP would probably last for months or years, so you need to think about long-term survival, not just survival for however long your food storage will last you. This could be something as simple as growing sprouts in your windowsill or having a full-fledged garden. Another important consideration when it comes to food is having multiple ways to cook off-grid. If you need to shelter in place, then being able to cook indoors would be essential. Having something like a butane stove or an alcohol stove would allow you to do this with relatively little risk. If you need to move from one location to another, having something portable like a solo stove light or a firebox stove would allow you to prepare food using multiple fuel sources, and the solo stove has the added benefit of producing very little smoke. But probably the main thing is just to avoid relying totally on stoves and grills that use finite fuel sources like butane and propane. While they are good to have, also be sure to have options that use natural materials as well. The next thing you need to have after an EMP is medications and first aid items. After one occurs, hospitals won't be operational, and the days of going to a pharmacy to pick something up will be long gone. Having a supply of antibiotics on hand could help prevent needless deaths from common illnesses and infections. And several companies now offer legally prescribed emergency antibiotics for the purpose of overseas travel or just general preparedness. You should also keep basic medications on hand, including those that can treat stomach ailments. The most dangerous risk from gastrointestinal ailments is the possibility of becoming dehydrated, and being able to control those symptoms can help you avoid that. If you have small children, be sure to have any common medications that they may need as well. Infants, toddlers, and other young children require special formulations of certain medications, and giving them the adult version of those can be dangerous. And you also need to have some basic first aid items like antiseptics, bandages, triple antibiotic ointment, and braces so that you can help deal with just common injuries that are going to come up. Another thing that you need to have after an EMP is lighting. Many modern lighting methods may be destroyed by an EMP, so it would be beneficial to have some primitive backups. Many people will gravitate towards candles, but these do have some drawbacks. They don't produce as much light as some other options, and they're also more likely to start a fire on accident. They are, however, very cheap and easy to store in large quantities. 
Tabletop oil lamps and hurricane lanterns are the next step up. They're brighter than candles, and most of the time their flames are contained inside of either a glass globe or chimney. But it's important to understand that that doesn't make them completely safe. You still need to be very careful when you're using those. Both oil lamps and hurricane lanterns can use either kerosene or paraffin lamp oil as fuel, so you should have plenty of whichever one you choose on hand, as well as some extra wick material. Also be aware that lights like these aren't going to be nearly as bright as modern electrical lighting. That is unless you have something like one of those expensive Aladdin lamps. If you do need something brighter, propane or white gas lanterns can be a viable option as long as you have plenty of fuel and mantles to get you through a longer term situation. A dual fuel lantern may be the best option in this kind of situation because it can run on unleaded gasoline as well. The next thing you should have to survive an EMP is hand tools. Modern power tools are nice, and I love mine, but they do have sensitive electronics that could be vulnerable to an EMP. Having basic hand tools like hammers, screwdrivers, and wrenches is just a good idea for everyday life, but having other tools like hand saws would be useful if you couldn't use your circular saw or sawzall. Other manually powered tools like braces and bits and egg beater drills would allow you to drill holes of different sizes and depths. As a general rule, the egg beaters are good for smaller holes, while braces and bits do very well if you need a hole with a large diameter or you need to bore deep. Drill bits designed for impact drivers work very well in egg beater drills since they have a quarter inch hex shank, which will prevent them from slipping in the chuck. You should also have dedicated survival tools as well. If we were to lose access to modern technology, then having access to bushcraft tools and being able to use them properly would become very important. Another thing that you need to have on hand after an EMP is books. It's impossible to remember everything, and if one were to happen, looking up something on the internet wouldn't be an option. Some examples of books that you may want to have are going to first of all be just general survival books. Things like the SAS Survival Guide, then Bushcraft 101. Also, the Survival Medicine Handbook and other medical references would be good since you may not have access to a doctor. I did a video covering the best books for preppers and survival, and I'll be sure to put a link for that in the description below. Another issue that you'll have to deal with after an EMP is security. In a situation like that, there's going to be a lot of scared and desperate people. Then on the other side, there's also going to be some folks out there that are going to see that as an opportunity to prey on others. So you really do need to be able to defend yourself. Aside from having plenty of guns and ammo and knowing how to use them, you also don't want to overlook things like early warning systems, things like motion sensors. Those along with holographic optics or red dots would be very good things to keep in something like a Faraday cage, so that way you'd have them if you needed them. And when it comes to those kinds of optics, having something with a quick detach mount would be good because you could remove it and replace it without having to re-zero it. Body armor would be another good thing to have, and this here is some soft body armor that's rated primarily for pistol rounds. But in the case of an EMP, having a higher level of protection either from steel plates or ceramic plates would probably be preferable. And if an EMP does happen, it's very likely that losing our technology is just going to be one of our problems. It's very possible that an EMP would come right before nuclear strikes on ground targets, and that would create a whole host of other issues. Having some sort of Geiger counter or dosimeter would allow you to know if you're being exposed to radiation, and if so, how much. You could also use them to determine if food or water has been contaminated, and since it's such an important device, it's definitely something you want to keep in a Faraday bag in case you need it. You also want to consider the shelter options that you have at your disposal. While a bunker may be the best case scenario, most people aren't going to be able to afford those. A basement can be another good option, but the bottom line is that any shelter is better than none. Whether you're dealing with a direct hit or just fallout, the worst place that you can be is out in the open. If you're unlikely to suffer a direct hit but could experience fallout, then something as simple as plastic sheeting taped over air vents, windows, and doors could prevent fallout particles from entering your home. Personal protective equipment, especially gas masks, would be useful since they can prevent alpha and beta particles from entering your body through your mouth or nose. Potassium iodide pills can help prevent your thyroid from absorbing radioactive iodine. Now, if you want to see some prepper and survival related items that a lot of people forget to stockpile, then be sure to check out this video. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.